I'd like to say good morning to everyone. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Each and every day that we're given an opportunity in our life, it is truly a blessing. Because it is His grace and His mercy that we have the opportunity at life. Was there anything that we did with that was so great, that was so good, that He owed us another day of life? But no, it was His grace, His mercy, and His love for us that gave us another opportunity. And for that, we should be thankful. And we also should be thankful that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come as a sacrifice and make the payment for the sins that we committed. It's truly, truly a blessing for his son, Jesus Christ. And not only for his son and what he did for us, but also for the love that he had in sending us this spirit that enabled us to dwell and walk and feel his presence and to walk in his power and to walk in his strength so that we may have the tools that we need to overcome Satan and that we can also fight in this battle that we must fight in. And it's not a battle of flesh and blood, but a spiritual warfare. So we have all that we need to walk in his favor, in his love, and in his power, and his strength, and overall have the victory over this world through his son, Jesus Christ. Today, we have an excellent lesson. It's a lesson that we, as churchgoers, as believers in Christ, know so well. It's a lesson about um, women. We know that everybody knows that women are very important in this world. First of all, we need women as mothers and child uh, for the birth of children. But more importantly, God wants us to understand that in the spirit, there is no difference in gender, race, height, um, economic status, whatever way you can divide and separate people in Christ, there is no difference. The only thing that he sees is your heart and what you believe and what you profess. So as Christians, we must also understand that we all can be anointed with his spirit and with his, and with his gifts. We all can be blessed, no matter what our gender, race, or creed. We too can be blessed by Jesus Christ. So, on that note, our... Uh, <clears throat> new unit is unit 3 and it's called the title of the unit 3 is the call of women the call of women so this, this is a very timely lesson because when we look around our churches and we look around in our services even when we look in the ministry uh, that we have here the majority of the believers and the followers are women. So women play an important role in the will of God and the kingdom of God and the spreading of his word. So knowing this, we should all be very aware of how God has plans to use women and is willing to use women. Now, that's very important because many times in society, women can be considered 
not as equal as men. So, we as believers in Christ and those who choose to study his word must truly understand how our Lord and Savior thinks and treats women and people, human race, all together. See, we don't serve and believe and walk in the world. No, we walk in the spirit of Christ. We walk in the spirit and we walk in his word and in his truth. And our lesson for the next four days, starting today, we want to look at how the Lord has used women in the Bible. And we as believers must understand and know that no matter the gender, the race, the social economic status, where you were born, where you live now, where you are, your age, God does not discriminate on either of those things. He looks at us at our heart and what we believe. So, we're going to look at the call, we're going to study the call of women in this unit. And we have lessons that are going to be discussing how God's using women. Our lesson title today is, Women Speak Out. Women Speak Out. Okay. It comes from two books. It comes from one writer, but two books. Our writer that we have in common for both books is Luke. We know Luke as a physician. So when we look at Luke, Luke's writing, Luke was more in depth with his writing. He, he used um, a lot more detail in his writing. And so when Luke wrote his gospel, he wrote things that were, was written that weren't written in any other gospels. Sometimes he would thought to, he pointed out small things that other, other writers did not point out. One of the things that he pointed out was the fact that the God did not use the wisdom of the world. Many times it would seem that he would use things that were upside down than how the world used things. Okay? In other words, Luke's writing style was unique. He often time used the, uh, the universality of the gospel. In other words, he often time pointed out the poor and the, the marginalized. He oftentimes pointed out how the miraculous work of God and the lives of those who seem insignificant. You know, he used upside down terminology, as I just said, to stress how God reverses the order of things and the expectation of people by, by making the last first. Remember, he said, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. So he had a very unique style of writing. And in our lesson today, uh, we're going to study some of the writings of Luke about women and prophesy. Women Speak Out. Women Speak Out is the title. And our verses come from Luke, second chapter, verses 36 through 38. Acts. Second chapter, verses 16 through 21. And Acts, 21st chapter, verses 8 through 9. Verses 8 through 9. Okay. Are right, things we want to consider? All right. As we study this lesson, these are things we want to keep in mind. All right. 
for my people online, we have a techni technical problem. We're going to give it just a second. If not, we're going to keep marching on through the lesson in spite of what has transpired. All right. So we'll start by reading our scripture. Start with, with Luke. And it reads, verses, second chapter, verses 36 to 38. And there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asa. She was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow. She was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. And she coming in, the in, in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all th them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Then it goes on to Acts second chapter, verses 16 through 21. Acts second chapter, verses 16 through 21. And they read, verse 16, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Again, but this is that which, is, which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now let's move on to Acts 21st chapter, verses 8 through 9. Acts 21st chapter, verses 8 through 9. And they read, And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. So we see in our scriptures today, we see um, the Lord's will going forth in the lives of the believers. The Lord's will going forth in the lives of the believers. Now, we see in our first few verses, we see an important person by the name of Anna. Anna. And we see she was an elderly woman. And she lived in the temple. Let's see what the scriptures say about it. I didn't get that. Let's see what the scriptures said. It reads, And there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asa, and she was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. From her virginity. So we see Anna was of age. She was widowed. She was a wife, she was a widow, she was a worshiper, and she was a witness. She was humble and attentive and watchful, and she was very tuned in to what was going on in the temple and in the body, uh, in the church. She was in the right place at the right times, and her priorities were in order. All right, her name was Anna, which meant grace. She was the daughter of Phanuel, 
which meant the face of God. The face of God. She was from the tribe of Asher. Now, Asher was the son of Jacob. In particular, she was the second son of Leah. She was the eighth son of Jacob. And uh, <clears throat> Asher means happiness. Happiness. So we see it playing itself out in the life of Anna. And in this moment in her life, she truly had happiness. Why did she have happiness? Because she was blessed with what she trusted God for. And we as believers in Christ, when we have God's word and we have God's promise, and we put our trust and our promise in his word and his will for our life. It will come to pass. See, our Lord and Savior brings us happiness. Because his word is true. He is truth. He is salvation. He is deliverance. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is God in the flesh. I'm not sure I understand. So he holds all power in his hand, life over death. So when we put our faith and our confidence in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he will not let us down. So we see in the life of Anna, she was married at a very young age. And it says that she was married for seven years. And then her husband died. And then she has lived from the death of her husband 84 years. It's believed she lived 84 years. And if she was married at 12, we don't know what age she was married. It says she was at a young age, but just hypothetically, she was married at 12, which was probably kind of the youngest age you would get married, around the, around the youngest. Married seven years. And was married for 84. That will put her around the age of 103 years old. But it could be possibly interpreted as she was being 84 years old as well. But one, either of the two, we know that she was an elderly uh, woman. She was of age. She was of age. But we know that she was trusting in the Lord. It says that she lived in the temple. And she was waiting expectantly for God's word to come to pass. Now, how many of us are living our lives the same way? God has made his promise to us that we have given things to God. And we want to see those things come to pass. Well, they will. We just must stay steadfast. And continue to believe. You now many times God doesn't work. We must always understand God doesn't work on our time. He works on his time. And his time is always the best time. See, he knows what's best for us. He knows the best time in our, in our life. If he give us things that he asked for us too early, it could ruin us. See, he knows the best time to give us things that we need and what we need. And one thing we must also understand in the life of Anna is never we're never too old to serve. So she was in the temple daily. So being in the temple daily, she used her voice and she spoke. It said that she was a prophetess. So she served people daily in the temple. So it's two things about her life that are very important that are brought out in the scripture. First of all, she was a woman. She was a woman. And that she served the Lord daily in the temple. See, she expected great things from God. And it caused her to witness. And it also caused her to witness great things. See, when we expect great things from the Lord, see, we our Lord can only be as big as we allow him to be. 
See, you, if you only see, if your God is only a small God, then you only can receive small things from the Lord because that's all you have faith for him to receive. That's all you can see in him. But we as believers in Christ, if we can see the God for who he is, omnipotent, omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, then we as believers in Christ know that he can do all things. He can bring things to pass greater than we can ever imagine. So no matter what the circumstances are in our life, we can be saved. We can be delivered. It can be turned around. All things work for the good of those who love the Lord. We're never in a position in our life where our Lord and Savior can't help us. See, for 84 years, Anna served faithfully and believed faithfully in the word of the Lord, of the promise that he had that she shall see salvation. She shall, she shall see redemption. See, I don't know about you, but the Lord gave me 84 good, healthy years. I can truly believe that at the end of my life, I shall have eternal life with him in Christ, in, in heaven. See, that's a promise. Can we hold on to that promise until the end? See, truly understanding how powerful and how great that promise is, it truly can be, we truly can want <laughs> our lives to, to be a young life so we can hurry up and get to heaven where truly peace and happiness is. But we have a job here on earth. See, he has promises for our life. He has a will for our lives. Things he wants to use us to bring his kingdom, his will to pass. But the end of our life, we have a great promise that we can hold true to, that we shall live with him in eternity forever. So she was in the temple with, we, we know who else was she was in the temple with. She was in the temple with Simeon. And we know Simeon was given a promise that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. So she witnessed Simeon's happiness and the fulfillment of the promise that the Lord made to Simeon. And upon witness of that, she became happy because she realized her promise as well as seeing the redemption of our salvation. The one who redeemed the world from sin. And once she saw it, she then began, and this is the crutch of her life, and we want to walk away here as Christians, understand. She began to speak and to use her voice. See, this what from this point on what made her a prophetess. She began to speak the word of God. Now we got to understand, up until this point, the word of God had not been spoken. It has been darkness. There's no word, it has been no word of God from the ending of Malachi. So we see her speaking the word of God for the first time over 300 years. We know in 33 more years, another person would be the next person that will speak. And that will be John the Baptist. But upon seeing what she had held uh, her faith to see and but trusted the Lord to see, she began to speak God's word. And see, we as believers must be the same way. See, 
once we realize the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, all of you have witnessed a miracle of Jesus. Once you were born again, once your heart was changed from sin to repentance and living in the spirit, from sin to not wanting to sin again, to living a life after Jesus and not want to sin again, but, but to choose to walk in his will and his way and walk in his spirit, that's a miracle. So you were born again. And see, once you experience that miracle in your life, that change in your life, once you see and touch and feel and walk in the presence of Jesus, then we too must become a voice for God. Now, it may not always equal out to be preachers, per se, or ministers, per se, but we all will have a testimony of just what brought God has brought you to or brought you from. And then we are not gifted in voice and speaking, then the next testimony should be the way that we are living our lives since we met Jesus Christ. See, she began to give thanks to God in the temple. She began to share the word of God. She began to show her gratitude. And then she began to worship. It says in verse 38, And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spake of him to all them that look for redemption in Jerusalem. See, instantly she gave thanks to God. See, because we couldn't save ourselves. We can't save ourselves. See, it's through, only through Christ Jesus do we have salvation. So once we meet him and once we realize our salvation, once we have eternal life through Christ Jesus, then we can't help but to give him thanks, to give him glory, see, to be filled with happiness and to, be, to share the word of God and what he has did for us and how freely he will give it to you if you just believe. And see, this is what we see in the life of Anna. And that's what we should be also reflect in our lives. In our lives. Our next verses move us toward Acts 2nd chapter, verses 16 through 21. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet of Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, say of God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall come on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Whosoever. It's always a, a word that we as believers should love to hear come out of the mouth of the Spirit and onto the pages of the Bible and into the ears of the hearer because we are the whosoever's. Now, I can't trace my bloodline back all the way back to 2,000 years ago, whether I was born and had some blood in the, in the line of the 12 sons of, Abraham, of Jacob. But I do know in the year 2021, if I believe in Jesus Christ, his life and his death and in his word and in his salvation, I am an heir and I'm adopted, I'm grafted in 
to the family of Abraham and to his salvation and to the kingdom of God. And I'm a, I am a child of the, of the Lord. And we all, and that applies to all, what it just said, whosoever. See, the whosoever is the word that we all should love because that pulls us in. So if we call on the name of the Lord, we shall be saved. Whosoever. If you don't take nothing else away from your lesson today, know that you can be saved. Whosoever. But more in particular, more specific in our lesson today, I do want to touch on some other things about the salvation that I, I want you to walk away and carry with you as well. It says that, it, it, it stressed that, uh, verse 17 says, And it came to pass in the last day, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon who? All flesh. All flesh. And your sons and your daughter shall prophecy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall, shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophecy. Now, what key words that we want to be sure to take away from this message. Now, who was giving us this message? It was Peter. Peter is preaching. This is the beginning of the church. If you know a little of what has transpired, we know about 50 days earlier, Jesus was crucified. And on the third day, he rose. When he rose, he had our power in his hand, power of life and death. And for about 40 days, he showed himself to the believers and to him, his disciples. And then he was taken up again and, and left the promise with the disciples that he would come back again. And they now were in an upper room. The believers, the, the apostles, and the women, and believers, and other believers of Jesus Christ. They were in the upper room, and they were waiting to hear from the Lord. Because he told them, he told them specifically, when I sit at the right hand of my Father, I will send to you a comforter. The comforter will be the Holy Spirit. And you will know that I have reached my destination. And my promise and my, and my confirmation to you will be the Spirit that I will share with you. So they were sitting, they were waiting to hear from the Lord. And all of a sudden, Peter got an unction and began to preach. And, he, and as he began to to preach, the Spirit of the Lord came upon the hearers of the Word. And this came about on the 50th day, and the day of what? Pentecost. When the church was born. And the witnesses to the, the people who received the Holy Spirit. They witnessed the, the people in the spirit speaking in other tongue. I can imagine that they may have been dancing. They may have been uh, moving in ways that was different than normal. Because they were filled with the spirit. So the witnesses thought that they were drunk. And Peter was quick to tell them who would be drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. But that they were filled with the Spirit of God. And he went on to begin to preach to the people, saying that what you are witnessing is 
what Joel spoke about in the second chapter, verses 28 through 29. You witness the spirit that the Lord had promised that he would pour out to all of the people. So you witness the confirmation of God's word. Again, we see God confirming his word. His word coming to pass. And this is what we're seeing in our scriptures. And what they want us to know that when the spirit came, it just didn't come for men. It just didn't come for white people. Because I would have you know, was there any white people probably in the room? When I say white people, I mean Caucasians or European descent. Okay? So don't be fooled like the Bible is only for Europeans. No, it wasn't. The beautiful thing about the audience or the demographics or the people that were there, well, they were from all places because it was the time of Passover. Well, actually, it was another feast 50 days after the Passover. But people from all around were coming into the city of Jerusalem to celebrate the feast. So we saw all these people from different lands speaking in unknown tongues. So it was a great and powerful thing to behold and to witness. And again, the specific point that I want and, and, our, and our writers of our Sunday school lesson want us to understand was that the spirit fell on all. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That means the poor and the rich, the black and the white, the young and the old, and in particular, the men and the women. See, the same spirit that fell into a man fell into a woman. So the gifts of the spirit that came down on the man, guess what? The same gifts of the spirit fell on the woman. And for us to be uh, well-rounded and more so that than that, it fell on the the person from Africa, it fell on, it fell on the person, any person that did come from Europe, it fell on any people that came from Asia, it, came, it fell on any people that came from South America, or anybody was crossing the Atlantic Ocean at that time. Anybody that was there and believed, the Spirit fell upon them. Upon what? All flesh. So it's not a white man religion, or a black man religion, or such and such religion. God's spirit falls on all whosoever, <laughs> whosoever believes. It says your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And then just say your sons, see, your sons and your daughters. Very powerful scripture. Because see, we see we got man-made rules in our denominations. That will make us think that only certain people can speak God's word. But we see in God's word, that's not true. It can fall on, it says all flesh. All flesh. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Now what is prophecy? To speak out the word of God to the people and to speak that word with the help of the Holy Spirit of God. See, once we receive the Spirit and we speak the Spirit, the word that God that God gave us through the Spirit, then we are a prophet. We are speaking prophecy. Now, many times, many people only believe prophecy is a telling of the future thing, of things to come, speaking of the future. That's not always the case, even though prophecy can be speaking of things to come. But prophecy is always is also speaking the word of God through the Holy Spirit. So we see that can be that gift can be given to all flesh. 
young and old. It said, young man shall see visions. See, those young men seeing visions mean that you can see. It gives you goals. See, things to strive for in your youth, directions to go in, ways to live your life. See, he gives you a direction for your life. So, and then if you walk in the direction that the, the, the Lord shows you for your life, then that's you live in your life. You live in according to the will of God and not your own will. And that's the mistake of many young men and young women. They kind of live how they want to live or what they think they want and don't listen to what God has for their life. And your old man shall dream dreams. What's that saying is old man should be able to speak from the experience that they have and the years that they experience on this earth. One thing I can truly tell you about my earthly father is that he truly can give me wisdom about things to come and many things that I have to face in life. Many the deacons and older men, the older uh, spirit, spiritually guided men can also give you wisdom about things that you have to face in life. But the Lord wants us to know it's just not men. <laughs> Women as well. See, one of the questions I was tempted to ask before I started our lesson today was name some women that has been uh, touched your life in a powerful way for God. Name some Christian women that you know have touched your, your life in a powerful way for God. And my intention was for, or for you to put that in the chat box. But my, I got thrown off track when the, all the technology went to the left. <laughs> but if I would have went as planned, many of you could name not only one, at least one, but if not one, you can name many women that have been powerful to us in our walk in Christ. If they have did nothing but pray for you <laughs> and just forgive you for where you were in life. See, many times you will understand that older women and men, older women in particular though, are showing you God because they still love you in the sin that you're walking in. But more than that, they try to guide us, they try to help us, and they try to teach us. See, so what I want you to understand is how powerful of a role that women play in God's kingdom. All my Sunday school teachers, except for one, were women. You know, all my Urshan board teachers, I mean, uh, directors, were women. You know, it's so many things, so many positions that women were in in my life that guided me and strengthened me in my walk with Christ, just in my testimony. See, what we have to understand is the women play a major role in the, in the kingdom of God. We got to understand that the Bible many times was written from a male perspective because of society at that time. But see, as time goes on, as God's will is revealed, we learn that we learn more about what his intentions were for us in our lives. And his revelation helps us to understand that many ways that people thought in the past was not really the way God intended things to be. For example, many people, it was a time when only people thought only Jewish people, Christ came for only Jewish people. And only Jewish people can be saved by God. But what did we learn? What did Paul have to learn? That that was not the case. What did Peter have to learn? That that was not the case. The Gentiles shall be saved also. So what we should be understanding in our messages to come is that women can be blessed. And this is what the, the, the central crutch of our message today. That women can have the same spiritual gifts as men.
can have the same spiritual gifts as men. So they can, if men can be given the word to teach and, and to preach, then guess what? The same spirit that we just learned over all flesh is given to women. And see, then we understand that. We got to understand that it can be given to black and white and Mexican and whatever race, whosoever. Whosoever. To all who believe. See, the last people in the world that should be racist in any form of fashion is Christian believers. How hypocritical is that? When you are a white man believing in racism as if God came to save white people. <laughs> he wasn't even your race. If you look from the bloodline per se. So we can't get fooled by lies. We talked about that in our, in our Bible study, spiritual warfare. We know we, get, we must put on uh, the belt of truth. We must know the truth. <laughs> so, but God wants us to understand that same spirit is upon all flesh. See, God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And what is Peter? Peter is the rock in which what? I will build my what? My church. So this is the person that he's going to build the church on from his sermons, from his preaching, from his word that he got from Jesus, of course. And that spirit is upon all flesh, okay? All right, and we go on to talk about our last few verses. Our writer in our Sunday school lesson goes on to Acts 20, first chapter, verses 8 through 9. And it reads, Leaving the next day, we reached Caesarea and stayed at the house of Philip, the evangelist, one of the seven. He had four unmarried daughters. Now, we talk about Philip. We know Philip, from the sixth chapter of Acts, Philip is a disciple, I'm sorry, is a deacon. He was one of the seven original deacons. You know, deacons came about because they were serving the people in Caesarea, the apostles were working, serving, ministering, preaching, doing all the things they cared for the people in Caesarea. But it was too much work. And it was so much work that they could not adequately study, pray, and teach God's word because they were doing so many other things as well. Because remember, ministry is service. It's not just talking Ministry is actually service, the work that you're doing serving others. That's ministry. But it was so much and so many people that they could not adequately teach God, teach and preach and pray for the people that they were trying to serve. So they were led and guided by the Spirit to pick seven among them that would come and their role was to help those who needed help. In particular, at that time, it was widows was the ones that they could not uh, serve adequately. And they called them deacons. And that's when the office of deacons was created in the church. And Philip was one of the seven that were chosen. Now, as time went on, that was Acts 6. Now, this is Act 20 chapter. As time went on, 21st chapter, I'm sorry. Philip has moved from a deacon to an evangelist. He's an evangelist now. And he, one of the most famous stories about Philip was him and the eunuch. The eunuch, remember Philip was called to go into the desert to travel to this place. And he could not understand, but he followed the spirit. And on his way, he ran into an African eunuch that asked him a question. What is this that they are talking about in Isaiah? It was describing the suffering servant that he had to die for the sins. He went to be crucified like a sheep before his shears and did not say a word. What is this Bible? What is they talking about? Then he described to him who Jesus Christ was and what he did. 
And after hearing the testimony and the sermon of Philip, the eunuch said, where can I be baptized? Is there any water that I can be baptized? How can I be saved? And Philip went on to baptize him, and the eunuch became saved. And he went to Ethiopia preaching and teaching again. Someone else who once they ran and met Christ, and once their life was changed, they went and they were so thankful they couldn't wait to tell everybody about the salvation in Christ Jesus. He went back into Ethiopia and spread the good news of the gospel. Well, we see where Paul is on one of his missionary missions. Actually, he's on his way to Jerusalem. So he stopped over in Caesarea and they stay at Philip's house. And, at, and, and the writer Luke, Luke is with Paul on his journey. He's with Paul on his journey. And when you say we, we he's talking about, when you say we, he's talking about Paul and him. See, Acts 16 chapter, when he just described the things about what Paul was doing, he was, he was saying Paul and other names. But he was with them all the time as well. But after the 16th chapter, it only was the only consistent person that was with Paul was Luke. So when he said we, is talking about him and Luke. And Luke is the writer of the book of Acts, as well as the Gospel of Luke. And he said, leaving the next day, we reached Caesarea and stayed at the house of Philip the Evangelist, one of the seven. So we, we understand that. Now he had, this is the point that our writers of the Sun School lesson want us to understand. He had four unmarried daughters who did what? Prophesied. They prophesied. Now, what that tells us is that women can also possess the spirit. They can hear from God. We already established that. We already established that in our, in our teachings from Acts second chapter upon all flesh but to further reiterate, our Sunday school writers gave us an example in Acts, the 21st chapter. They had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. It says in the New Testament, had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. And to prophesy, they had to speak God's word, what? In the spirit. See? So women can hear from the Lord and not only hear from the Lord, they have the gift to speak God's word. It could be um, speak the future, things to come, or just the word for now. So we as believers in Christ must not get caught up in traditions, must not get caught up in man-made rules and understandings and understand that our Lord and Savior does not judge according to race or gender, age, financial, back, financial status, rich or poor, old or young, nationalities. He only judges who believes and who do not believe. See, when you talk about the last day, the day of the Lord, see, that's what Joel was talking about. We really can get into a lot of things that could interest and powerful things to know, but we just don't have the time to talk about. We talk about the last day. We talk about the day when Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, he's not going to say all black people go to heaven, all white people go to hell. He's not going to say all old people go to heaven and all young people go to hell. He's not going to come back and say all men go to heaven and all women go to hell. No, he's going to come back and he's going to judge those who believed and who did, did not believe. That's who he judges. Who 
call on the name of Jesus Christ for salvation. And those that heard the word and did not believe. See, that's why that is the last day. And we as hearers of this word have to make a choice today. We have an already choice. I encourage you to make the choice and believe in Jesus Christ and his word and his truth and his salvation and walk in his spirit that he's made available to who? Whosoever will call on the name of Jesus, they shall be filled with his spirit. And being filled with his spirit, we will be given gifts of the spirit. Everybody will not have the same gift, but everybody will have a gift of the spirit. And they don't say, I give this spirit, this gift only to men, and I give this gift only to women. It doesn't say that. To black or white, none of those things. We as believers must know the safety and the protection of our salvation and not let man-made rules and laws take away the rights and the power and the strength that we have in our salvation. A lady may have a powerful gift of teaching and preaching God's word, but it's shut up in the beliefs of a man-made law that women can't teach. Don't be held back by a man-made rule. You can't be too old. You're never too old to work and serve the Lord and to feel and to, and to gain his promises. Anna was either 103, roughly, or 84. Or 84. One of the two, it depends on how it was interpreted. And she was still serving God, and she still was receiving blessings and gifts from the Lord. So her age, see, she began uh, prophesying, at 80, 80 or 100, whatever age it was. So age, it, the Lord doesn't discriminate because of age. He said, young men also shall what? See visions. See, we can't get to saying he too young or she too young to preach. Yeah, obviously you too young to, to do certain things just by sheer nature of development. But you, if, if you can hear, as long as you can hear and can understand English or whatever language that you're speaking, and you can be hearing something God can be saying. See, we can't never say, I want to hear what that preacher got to say because he or she is Mexican. See, the only thing you should judge or determine should be the judgment of what you hear from God. Is it true or not? Is it faithful? Is it, is it God's word or not? Not the nationality, the age, the gender, the race. So God has to be embarrassed every Sunday morning. In many places because it's all black and it's all white and it's all Mexican and it's all Korean in churches. At the first church at Pentecost, it was what? All nationalities there in Jerusalem. And all who heard the word and believed were saved. It wasn't an all Jewish church. Even at that time in Jerusalem. <laughs> so we and I believe ministries and, and other ministries was making a concentrated effort to invite other nationalities, all ages, all races, 
to come partake in what we're doing. And we, as at times, must be willing to share in with things that they're doing. And on that note, I want to bring our Sunday school lesson to a close. And more specifically, I want us to truly understand that the title of our unit and the next four lessons we're going to study is going to be the call of women. And we want to be sure, men and women, to understand that God's spirit is poured out on all flesh. And men, as well as women, can hear from the Lord and can be called for, from the Lord. And the Lord can use both. And he gives the same gifts. Well, not the same gifts, I'm sorry, because we all have different gifts. But the gift God gives to men, he also gives to women. We got to realize the first person that taught the gospel was Mary Magdalene. She went to the, the, the tomb. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, they went to the tomb. Matthew 11 chapter, I think. I'm sorry, Matthew 20 chapter. I'm, I'm not sure what, what chapter. They went to the tomb and realized the tomb was open and Jesus was not, was not there. They ran and told the apostles that Jesus has arisen. He was resurrected. Remember, they met the angel on the way. The angel told him to go tell the, the apostles and said in one of the other gospels was a woman. The Samaritan woman evangelized her whole city in Samaritan. She met Jesus at the well and Jesus told her all who she was and who he was and he asked the everlasting water. What did she do? She went and told everybody in her town and they came out and they sat with Jesus for two days and the town was saved. Those who believed were saved. See? So we all, we all can be used for God. And I want to thank you for joining in on our Sunday School lesson. I pray that something has been said that will make your walk stronger in Christ. And I pray that something has been said or done that furthers you along in your walk in victory in Christ. Let's end our Sunday school lesson with the word of prayer. Dear Lord, we come today, Lord, thank you for your grace and mercy, Lord. We come to you, Lord, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. We come today, Lord, praying that you fill us with the spirit that you have provided for us, Lord, and that we walk in your spirit. And in your spirit, we have the boldness, we have the knowledge, we have the guidance. We have the light that shines in a dark world that can not only lead us to your salvation, but lead others to your salvation as well, dear Lord. We pray that your word be manifest in our thoughts and our spirit and the things that we say and things that we do, dear Lord. And we pray above all, Lord, that we are changed in your word, dear Lord. And we come today, Lord, praying for those who are sick right now, Lord. We're praying that you heal their bodies, dear Lord, and we pray that you touch their spirit so they can be made whole, Lord. We're praying for those that are in need right now, Lord. Again, we, don't, we are not smart enough to know all the things that people need, that we need in this world, Lord, but we do know that you have the power and you are willing and you are able to help us in a time of need, Lord. So we've given our needs and we've given our trust to you, dear Lord, and we know that you can save and you can deliver us, dear Lord. And I pray as we leave this Sunday school lesson today, Lord, that we have your protection and your guidance. And above all, Lord, we have your salvation. And these things we ask in your son Jesus' name, amen. And on that note, I want to leave you with the watchword word of Christ, peace. peace. To God be the glory. Everybody have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you, Amen. amen. Sabrina.
Hey, Sabrina, just good to have you back again. To God be the glory.